Hey there, it's Mike. And in this video, we're going to be discussing lease negotiations for commercial real estate space. Specifically, we're looking at retail, industrial or office asset classes. And if you've ever gone to rent a space as a tenant or if you're a landlord and you have a building that you're looking to fill, you may or may not know that price is just one of the things we negotiate on and that there's many other topics and items that get factored into that lease agreement. And so in this video, I'll be discussing what the really the key points that I look at for negotiations on as well as uh, what that process may look like from going from a letter of intent to getting that lease agreement signed. So let's get comfy. So you've been searching and you finally found that space that you've been looking to lease. Maybe you're a new business, maybe you're in expansion mode, or maybe your landlord just jacked your rent up and you're ticked off and you want to find something new. Well, now that you found that space, what do you do? Uh, well, to get started, uh, we usually begin with a letter of intent. And so that letter of intent is really a summary of the main items that go into a lease agreement. And so the goal is to negotiate on that letter of intent between you, the tenant, or you, the landlord, and come to an agreement before we get the attorneys involved. You can see the reasons for that. It can be more costly uh, sometimes if you have to go multiple rounds between attorneys, depending on how they charge. Some may be a flat fee, others may be by the hour. So you wanna make sure that you're clarifying that with your attorney ahead of time. Uh, full disclaimer, I am a commercial real estate broker. I am not an attorney. Uh, so I highly recommend that whenever you're going to sign any type of contract, like a lease agreement, uh, that you do have a legal counselor review it and make sure that all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. So when you think of a lease, you know, one of the, the main point is really what's the cost? What's that price? How much am I paying per month? And there's a number of different types of leases that are out there. And for more information on that, make sure to check out our video on uh, net versus gross leases. And that will give you a deeper dive into the different types of leases. And ultimately, what are the, the additional costs that you may be responsible for if you're a landlord or a tenant? So aside from price, some of the other items I look at is what's the term of the lease? What's the length of term that the landlord's asking for? Uh, what's the length of term that the tenant is willing to do. And when we talk about term of lease, uh, that's really, we're looking at your initial term. So for example, you may be willing to do a five year, a seven year or a 10 year initial term. If you're a new business or if you're a business that's in expansion mode, you might go with a shorter term, but request renewal options. And so what a renewal option does is it gives you that ability to extend the term out longer than that initial term. So for example, I may negotiate on a retail lease, let's say a seven year initial term period and then I may request two or three renewal options five years a piece so I'm getting seven years up front and if I get three renewal options with five years each that's 15 additional years so overall I'm looking at a 22 year uh, term the advantage though is to the tenant that that is your option to extend that lease if you execute those options now there are definitely going to be some requirements in order to do that there may be a rate increases that take place at the renewal term. Uh, there may also be a period of time that you have to give notice to the landlord of your intent to renew and execute that renewal option. So rent escalations are when your rent increases each year. It could be each year, it could be at renewal. So for example, if you have a five-year initial term and you have three five-year renewal options, it could be a set amount at each renewal option when you execute it. So that is not uncommon to see, for example, in like retail spaces where you may May be on a net lease where the pass-throughs are already they are what they are so as far as like the building taxes real estate taxes building insurance and the common area maintenance costs those are passing through to the tenant at what those costs are are actually at so and it's charged back at the end of the day if there's an overage to the tenant so on something like that then really the escalation is focused on the base rent piece if we're looking at a gross lease structure then there's less flexibility there for the landlord and they're taking on more risk because that gross lease may include things like your taxes. It may include your building insurance, uh, common area maintenance. Those items may be built inside of that gross lease. So a landlord may push to try and get a higher escalator each year or at each renewal period because there's less flexibility for them if costs increase significantly. Usually the security deposit is there to protect the landlord in the event of any additional expenses that arise because of you being that tenant in that space. So that could be 
any damages or repairs to the space that once you move out, they have to recoup some costs. However, if you're leaving the space in what we call a broom swept condition, granted there'll be normal wear and tear, usually landlords should be willing to, to work with you and give you a full refund on that security deposit. And so that is something that gets refunded at the end of the lease term. Now, when is a security deposit required and how much of a security deposit? In our market, it's, it's not uncommon to see one or two months security deposit depending on the size of the building uh, as well as the credit worthiness of the tenant. That's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. If we have a high credit worthy tenant, you know, a national tenant that has a corporate guarantee on that lease, many times we're not even collecting a security deposit because that corporate guarantee is uh, sufficient for the landlord. Other items that may increase the security deposit are going to be if the landlord is doing a significant build out for you, the tenant, then a security deposit amount may be required above an, what you may see in a traditional type of lease. Rent abatement. So rent abatement is free rent. And so free rent is, especially if you're doing a build out inside of a space and you're putting capital into that building as a tenant, you may be able to get free rent. You may be able to get free rent. You may also be able to get what's called tenant improvement allowance. So depending on the landlord and depending on their sophistication and their experience, some landlords may, may offer this to you to come into their space, improve their space, and in lieu of you doing that, they give you some discounts, right? So uh, some discounts as far as free rent, you know, especially when you're doing the build out and when the construction is going on, they may also include a tenant improvement allowance, which may get paid out a number of ways. Some ways may include as work is completed, they're reimbursing you for that once lien waivers are signed off by the contractors and you've paid that cost, then you get a reimbursement from the landlord. I've worked it out it that way. Other ways I've seen it done is it's built into the lease and so it may be a discount off of that monthly rent cost. Free rent may be front loaded, it may be back loaded, it may even be built inside of that lease agreement, you know, at periodic times, you know, upon renewal. I'd say the, probably the most common one is upfront. So if we're doing like a, for example, if I'm doing a five year lease and it's negotiated the three months will be abated because that tenant's coming in, they're a high credit worthy tenant, they're someone that we wanna get in that space, they need a little transition time, maybe they're doing some improvements to the buildings. In a, a circumstances like that, that three month period would be front loaded on that lease. And usually the way that we build it out is three months free rent and then the full 60 month term. So in that example, a five year or 60 month term, you're actually looking at 63 months total. Or, you know, same thing if you're doing a three year lease with three months free rent up front, well, technically we're gonna do three months free rent plus 36 months following that. So then that way the landlord's getting the full three years of rent, and but then it also gives that tenant time to get everything built out, get transitioned in the space, maybe they're up and running. One note I'll make on that, if you're a tenant and you have a landlord that needs to get a space to a certain condition in order for your contractors to come in and do the work, make sure that you put some kind of criteria in there, if you can, that stipulates our clock doesn't start until the landlord delivers this, this, and this, you know, at, at this stage, and then the clock begins for you on the free rent. Maybe you get it, maybe you don't, but I have seen circumstances where we've had leases in place, you know, landlord for whatever reason was delayed on delivering the space to us. Well, then that cut into our free rent time and then we're trying to negotiate after the case. So it's easier if you can have that built into the lease up front, and hopefully it'll motivate the, the landlord and or their manager to make sure that they're hitting that deadline in time for you to get into the space. And when we're talking about space and occupying a space, so there's two different things you may see in the the lease as well as the letter of intent, you'll have what's called an effective date and you'll have an occupancy date. So your effective date is the date that the lease actually goes into place. Your occupancy date, however, may be a different date. That's when you get access to the property. So like we discussed with the free rent scenario, we might be taking three months free rent up front. Well, then I would set my occupancy date for you know June 1st and then the effective date that the lease actually begins and that's when you start paying rent is gonna be three months after that. So so what's that? September 1st? September 1st. <laughs> so another note on tenant improvement allowance. However, if you are having the landlord do the build out and if the landlord is willing to do this, you may be able to work out an agreement where the rent increases. Maybe it's for a set period of time or maybe it's 
for that in initial term and you're spreading that cost out over that you know initial three to five year period granted if you're a landlord you're probably going to want to recoup those costs sooner than later especially if it's a tenant that uh, maybe they're newer in business maybe they don't have a history of leasing space then you're taking some risk on by doing an arrangement like that however if you could recoup that cost in the first 12 18 months maybe that's something that makes sense for you definitely uh, be creative in the way that you're able to work obviously it also depends on your personal situate financial situation and whether or not you could carry costs for that and if you're willing to take on that risk guarantees so guarantees are a tool that a landlord will use uh, so there's personal guarantees there's corporate guarantees and really what that's there for is like it sounds it's to guarantee that that lease will get paid so if I'm a landlord and you come to rent my space and you sign a five-year lease and maybe I'm doing build-out costs or maybe I'm not doing anything maybe it's just your lease in the space but I want to make sure that that lease is guaranteed I may require a personal guarantee from you you may be able to ask for a limited guarantee and the way that that works is you're shortening up that period so let's say you're signing a five-year lease you may request that if we're still here in you know year two or three you know after that period that guarantee goes away a corporate guarantee is going to be signed by a corporation you know or or the corporate officer that's uh, common to see when you're dealing with uh, national or international companies have multiple locations many employees that corporate guarantee goes pretty far with most landlords so but as a landlord definitely do your due diligence on that company make sure you are checking out what's their what's their financial situation all right so for options we have renewal options which we've highlighted already there's purchase options which gives you the option to purchase that building if you're the tenant and if you're a landlord and you're willing to do a purchase option my recommendation is that you define a set of dates that the tenant can execute that purchase option on uh, so for example if you're doing a five-year lease then you might specify okay in the beginning of year two you know so from months 12 to 15 you have to go under contract do your due diligence and close on that property during that time or or you just have to close on that property during that timeline and so that's something that's that's open you may lock in the purchase price at that time that you're doing the lease agreement or it might be something that you define in the future based off a third party appraisal another option uh, that we'll see in leases is the right of first refusal and so that may be for ex extending into uh, expansion space. So if you're in a multi-tenant building and a unit becomes available, well then you would get the first right of refusal in order to rent out that additional space. So why would you do that? Well, if you're in expansion mode and you need additional space or you're unsure if you'll need space in the future, that's one reason. Another reason may be, maybe there's certain amenities that are in that other unit that you don't have in your unit, or maybe you are looking to downsize. And so maybe you're willing to, if your lease is coming to an end on your first lease and you lease out this smaller space, space well then you can easily transition into that other space responsibilities are a big one so depending on your lease type you know a net lease versus gross lease modified gross lease uh, you definitely want to make sure that you are ironing out who's responsible for what when it comes to the building as well as the parking lot too and sidewalks so you know things like who's responsible for the roof who's responsible for the heating air conditioning units who's responsible for plumbing electric uh, if you're in an area that has snow you know snow removal landscaping, lawn maintenance, all those items. So the, the more you can define up front, the better. And there's really, there's three things to make sure you're defining on that. It's maintenance, repairs, and replacement. And so very important that you define all three of those for the different things that are being done. You can put caps in there as well. And so a cap example might be, okay, if I'm the tenant and I'm responsible for, let's say the rooftop unit for the heating and air conditioning, well, I may request that in a given year my repair costs do not exceed two thousand dollars or whatever that number may be a protection that you can request uh, so it kind of keeps your costs fixed at the end of the day the landlord may say no this is this is a retail triple net absolute triple net lease you're responsible for everything and it is what it is but it doesn't hurt to ask restrictions restrictions on uses are I think one area that so many people miss out on and if you are you know any type of business if, if I'm going 
going into, let's say, a, a retail building and there's, you know, I'm a, a restaurant. I may request for a restriction that no one else in that plaza that, of that building that that building owner owns or buildings that they own can sell chicken wings or can, you know, have their primary sale being coffee or might be recreational, you know, golf clubs or whatever, whatever it may be. Restrictions are huge. It is something you want to make sure that you are negotiating, especially if you're, if you don't want competition. It's a, it's a great area. If you're bringing value as an anchor tenant to that building, then I would hope that the landlord would be reasonable with you and give you those restrictions that you're requesting. Now, from the landlord's perspective, you may not want to grant restrictions because it may limit the future potential tenants that you may be able to attract in that building. And so it's strategic, but at the end of the day, if you're getting a tenant that is an anchor tenant that's bringing foot traffic to your building, then that helps out your other tenants and the marketability of your building to other tenants. So that's the trade-off, you know, you grant that restriction in hopes to get other co-tenants that have good co-tenancy with that, with that anchor. And last but not least, we have price. And so when it comes to negotiating on price, one of the big items is supply and demand. Uh, how much supply is there in that market and what is the demand? If you're in, let's say, the office space right now in our market, there's definitely an increase of supply and so the demand is low. And so the rates have come down because of that. However, you definitely want to check and see what are those comparable leases that have taken place for similar types of buildings. And that might be on not just asset class, but also the size of the space. Also, what kind of amenities are in that building? You know, is it a building that was built in the last 20 years or is it older? So what class of building does that fall under? Uh, so when you're reviewing those comps, make sure that those those items are being taken into consideration. Really though, it's all, it's what you bundle together with everything we've discussed in this video. You know, it's, it's not just the price, it's the length of lease, it's build out requirements. What's that cost look like for you, the tenant? What's that cost look like for the landlord? Uh, what's their space gonna look like after you're gone as a tenant? Is it something that's gonna be marketable that they can just plug and play and put someone else in there as a turnkey space? Or is it something that now they're gonna have to do some work in order to get it uh, back to a vanilla box or back to a, a condition that could be marketable in the future? So all those items are things you know to keep into consideration, but definitely negotiating on price is just one of those factors that we look at when it comes to commercial leases. So I hope you found this video beneficial. And if you did, I uh, hope you would leave us a like. And if you're interested in seeing more material like this, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you have any questions, please drop me a comment below. Or if you're another business owner or real estate broker and you've seen certain things in your market that might be different from what I've mentioned here in this video, uh, make sure to drop me a, a message because I enjoy seeing what's going on around our country and, and what's working in different marketplaces. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks.